Hello ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game From Scratch, and today we are talking about the Manu Game Engine. Now if that sounds familiar to you, you're probably a subscriber. We covered this one a little bit over a year ago, I think, when the 1.0 Alpha version was released. And today we're revisiting it because the 1.1 version is now available, and this adds a whole lot more functionality. Uh, if you've never heard of this one before, well first off, hit like, subscribe, and all that stuff. Stay up to date on the latest, greatest in the world of game development. But this one is one in the category of no-code game engines. And one of the big things about this 1.1 release is, well, you can actually create games now. <laughs> you can publish out to uh, Windows and Mac. Also, there is this new example here, Hard Landing. There is a new renderer, PBR-based workflow. That's quite a bit new things to like. So we're going to just take a look at it right now. Now, this would be an ideal one for... Uh, if you're an artist trying to like put together your portfolio, but you don't want to get into coding, or you just basically don't want to code, uh, this this is an option in the no-code category. This is the new demo. It is called Hard Landing. Uh, it's built into a number of different levels here. You've got full animated sequences and so on. We're going to look at one particular category of it here, and here you can see it in action. I believe the action key is X. So we're gonna we're gonna actually get killed here. So let's let's try and hit that guy until he's dead. And then one more time, die, oh, duck, all right, and die. So we're basically a, uh, what is it, uh, oh, I died, all right, I jumped down. Anyways, you get the idea of what's going on, you get this level-based platform, okay, so he stays dead, so we come down here, we're collecting those various different items. It's a fairly simple, straightforward 3D platformer, it is fully 3D, by the way, so you kind of keep killing these guys, this is part of the sequence of the entire uh, level. Let's go ahead and make sure that he's dead. All right, we'll jump. Oh, he's not dead. All right, I jumped down. I died again. So let's go over here into edit mode. You see here we are in run or play mode. Uh, I don't know what's going on. I don't know if it's something to my machine or the nature of the 1.1 release, but switching between these modes is somewhat painfully slow. Uh, so this could take a little bit of time. Okay, here we are. So now we are in the world itself. Now, the entire thing, everything we were looking at, I'll, I'll zoom back in just a second and showcase it to you, uh, is available here. So all the various different levels that we were looking at are here. Uh, at this point in time, uh, this is the area we're in. So you can see here that segment. But we go back here, there are a number of different chunks to this level all going together. But this here is that sequence of gameplay that we were looking at. And... I actually forgot which category it was, so let's go ahead and select something in the scene, and you're going to see here it is in the Rocket Up folder right here. So that is the area we're in right now. You're going to notice here we've got a number of different platforms that go together to make this section. So platform, a different platform, a different platform. On those platforms, we have these prefabbed en enemies. So you can see here, this guy is a... Uh, animated FBX. This guy was, was rigged using Mixamo, for example. Uh, you do have the ability to bring in a number of different assets. They're available here as prefabs. Four entities in the world, you'll notice up here, they have, first off, transform details, and you can move them around, translate, scale, and so on. Uh, you've also got over here, you can put physics on objects, and you can apply a number of different variables to things. Also, we could go ahead, add a new variable if we wish, and the types are basically Booleans and numbers. So that is kind of how entities in the world are added. Now, you may be wondering, okay, well, how is logic done? Well, how do I program things? Well, let's go on back up here, and you're going to see under the category of, uh, well, here's, here's an area. We have all of these various different animations going on. Uh, so actually, let's go back up. We'll, we'll do the... We'll find the root of this guy. So here, we've got everything that is controlling stuff is animation. So for example, if we want to kill the main character, we go kill the character. And then you can notice over here, we have the animation mode. Now, this can take a little bit of time to switch between sometimes, and other times it's perfectly uh, immediately, which I don't get. By the way, anything can be animated. I'll show you another object in a second that has properties. When you see over here, under animations, you can have objects in the animation. You can have sound in the animation variables in the animation, and other animation, you can insert an animation. That's what this guy is right here. At the same time, you can also have the events. So here are the events controlling this guy here. So the main character, um, main character body, kill main character, minion zone one, or zone two, zone three, or so on. So this is how your logic is added. You could do more logic, for example, I'll come in here, and if I wanted to do on key down, so if you press the up arrow, um, you can have your event fire here and then kind of just keep going from there. So that this is your simple logic scripting in this engine. Um, 
And yeah, that, that's kind of all of it. A lot of it is basically around the idea of animating things and having uh, different states of animation. And if you think about it, a lot of simpler games, that's realistically all that there really is to them. Now, one thing I find frustrating, this might be user error. There needs to be a way to like move faster. So I'm using the WASD keys to walk through the level. Uh, but this is the entire hard landing demo. Uh, kind of walks you through everything you need. You can download this one. Not sure if I mentioned this off the hop. I'm sorry. I keep forgetting to do this early on in the video. Uh, but what you want to do, uh, sorry, this guy will run on Windows and Mac. Sorry, Linux folks. Uh, but yeah, and you can also publish. I know I said that earlier on for Linux and Mac. Come on up here. You can see uh, you can export out your game now right here. Uh, yeah, so that's kind of the idea behind it. It's designed to be straightforward and clean and clear. Again, it's aiming at that whole um, uh, no-code demographic as their target audience. So that is Manu in action. Let me just exit out of this example. This example is downloadable. We'll go take a look at that in a second. Uh, if you want to check out Manu, it is available at manu.co. Um, it, it, yeah, it, it's, again, available for those two major different platforms. Uh, okay, that's that's too far ahead. In terms of the features here, uh, you can uh, save a lot of development time, enjoy convenience and joyful ways to develop game mechanics, have fun while creating, user-friendly system with no coding, customize and launch animations the way you want, either from the beginning of the game or after specific events, set up and modify any custom values on the go, that's variables, well, things like uh, health, animation, speed of the character or objects, use simple tools to create and reuse animation sequences that will improve your development process and ease the workflow, create advanced game animations in timeline using basic Excel-like formulas. We, uh, oh, I forgot to show you this. You can basically keyframe every single property in the world. So things like the X, Y, uh, the rotation values and so on. Uh, you can create enhanced visuals. This is one of the new things in this release. Now you have a PBR based renderer. Uh, also, this one's kind of pretty important. Now you can actually customize the main character and its animation. So you can import uh, and customize animated characters from your favorite 3D editor or asset library. Uh, you can reuse objects, export your game for Windows and Mac OS. Uh, you've got FBX, DAE and OBJ file format importing. Uh, that, which, by the way, that's going to cover you off of. You can use Blender, Max, Maya, you name it. Uh, and yeah, that's that's kind of the idea. We have this new project, Hard Landing. Actually, there's there's a couple you can check out. So there's Hector's Travels, a voxelish base looking game, and uh, Desert Adventure available as well. Um, so one of those things to be aware of here, they're saying it's targeting 3D artists, game designers, sound designers, creative people, and you. And you're going to notice programmers aren't on there. And this one really isn't for people that want to get, you know, into the weeds. There's no scripting beyond what you saw there. So most of the logic is going to be uh, event-driven, you know, on triggers, on level load, on things colliding. And then you're going to switch between animation states, toggling the visibility of things and so on. Um, so you're going to probably, if you're a coder and you're like looking for a way to extend things, I don't believe there's an extensibility yet. I do hope that Manu add that in the future. Definitely going to make a big jump forward. But the truth is, by taking all of those things out, you simplify it for 3D artists, game designers, sound designers, and creative people. So if you wanted to create your own game, you're able to create assets, but you're not able to code, Manu could be a good fit for you. All right, so... I also have a little bit of a look at what their upcoming roadmap is. A custom tag system for objects, animation system development improvements. Animation is obviously at the heart of this guy, so they're going to have uh, improved animation there. Uh, modified import of animation, animation speed control, support of if, then, and while in animation, support for state machines, uh, inverse kinematics, animation blending, innovative animation spreadsheets, prefab development improvements, trigger development improvements, additional game input systems such as mouse, touchpad, game pads, and gyroscopes. So right now it is basically keyboard only, so uh, quite limited in what it's capable of. It's got to move forward that way. An asset store, uh, editing development in, and improvements, uh, various different editor improvements, game object destruction tools, sound creation development improvements, uh, support for multiple game cameras, visual improvements, physics improvements, and so on. Again, I would like to see some kind of a um, uh, extensibility option out there. That's the only thing that really seems to be glaringly missing, especially for those programmer types that like this, but run against a wall about what you're capable of doing. If you had an extensibility or a plugin system, you could extend it and get around those things. That's, I think, the biggest thing that's missing, in my humble opinion. Uh, and you're going to see uh, they are going to be having um, in-app purchases and advertising support. So if you actually want to create a game that you can monetize, that will be coming soon. But as of now, with this release, there is the ability to do um, 
uh, export out for those two major platforms, which is a huge step forward. And obviously you can customize your main character. The original version, the, the 1.0 release, you had to use their main character, which made it pretty much just a tech demo. Now that you can bring in your own character with their own animations and you can bring in all your own 3D objects and everything else, you can actually create games now. So one of those things to be aware of. Uh, as I mentioned earlier on, and I will link this in the linked article down below, uh, there are a number of demos available. The one you saw here was uh, Hard Landing. It's set to showcase 1.1's features. Uh, but there's also, again, Hector's Treasure, Manu Boy Adventure Desert, and Adventure Mountain Village. And then finally, we have Voxel World. So if you want to see the capabilities of the Manu game engine and you don't want to start from scratch, these demos are probably the place to get started. There is also a sample project available and some free game ads. Oh, no, sample project is coming soon, which is weird. Because there's one if you drill in. Okay, so their navigation is a little weird. Um, but there is some stuff. Okay, so free assets are coming soon. Sample projects, there's pickup coin. So this is a project that introduces you to object to animation settings you can use for a pickup mechanism in your own game. So if you want to see how to go ahead and do those things, they are available here. A bit more of a tutorial level thing, whereas these ones are straight out demos, uh, like what you saw in action. That was hard landing. All right, so that there is Manu, a codeless game engine. Uh, again, they're not for everybody, but if you're, again, an artist trying to put together a CV, something like that, uh, it could be a good fit for you. Um, and in time, as they add more and more functionality, it will be more and more viable for creating uh, commercial games. So let me know what you think. Comments down below, and I will talk to you all later. Goodbye.